breeding like rabbits, can you have too many customers? I think that's absolutely true for lots of businesses now. Um, we have a single uh, metrics that we measure businesses by as to how many customers they've got. So a lot of the big um, PLCs are measured by how many new customers they signed in a given period. I mean particularly the uh, utilities, telcos, um, the Vodafones and O2s of this world are driven by how many iPhones they signed last month. Talk Talk are driven by how many new customers they've won or how many customers they've lost. And people measure these things and mark up the shares or mark down the shares because of it. But businesses are driven by a single metric, and I'm afraid that's wrong. Customers are not equal. You know, a good customer and a bad customer can be substantially different. A good customer spends lots of money with you, stays with you over a long period of time, and is loyal even through the bad times. So when they find cheaper competition, they don't immediately move to that cheaper competition. They give you the chance to match the price, and even if you can't match the price, uh, will still remain with you because they like the service that you offer. As opposed to potentially more transient and transactional customers, um, where you know, fundamentally, if you're not the cheapest in the marketplace, they'll move to where someone is the cheapest. And I think the mobile phones and the utility markets, the energy markets, are discovering that there's a whole bunch of people out there that are transient. And the marketing strategies that are being adopted, which are price driven, pr primarily driven through go compare or price comparison sites, uh, where you enter in your details and you're given the cheapest prices in the marketplace. And they will immediately switch to the lowest price uh, version. Those sorts of customers aren't necessarily the ones you want to attract. They might enable you to say, I've got 25,000 new customers, but at the end of the year, you'll have to say, and I've lost 23,000 of them because I'm no longer the cheapest. They've now gone to join someone else. I contend that are those customers worthwhile? I don't believe they are. I think those customers are the ones that will break a business because your systems and processes have to expand to contain you know, 200 million customers as opposed to the 200,000 that make a real difference. Uh, so your systems grow, your people grow, you have more people in your call centre, you have more bad debt, you have more credit problems, um, you have people sitting on the end of telephones waiting to deal with queries, more than you ever need. So I contend that uh, you know, breeding like rabbits is something that's really got to be paid attention to in business. We don't want too many customers. We want the right sort of customers. And we should carefully grade and select the customers that we uh, take on board. And if they don't meet minimum specifications, then why do we take them on? In the hope that they might spend more money with us. In the hope that they might become loyal. But the reality is, is that's not likely to happen. Some of the modeling work that we've been doing uh, using the Pareto principle is that 20% of your customers will generate 80% of your revenue. And those numbers can fluctuate up and down, but fundamentally they are true. That there is a core section of your customers that will generate most of your revenue. And there's a massive selection of your customers that will generate very little revenue. And I can test why do you have them? People will say, they give me economy of scale. You know, it's marginal revenue. But the reality is, is they drag down the performance of the business because the business performs to the average of its customers. And if the average of its customers is to spend £35 on, uh, a month on mobile telephone calls or £50 a month on electricity and gas, then the services of the business are developed to suit the £50 spenders or the £35 spenders. But if you're a larger customer that spends £250 on mobile telecommunications, maybe you want a better service. Maybe you want something that's different. So the services that you're being offered by the standard utility aren't the sort that you want. And therefore you're driven away because you don't feel loved and wanted. You feel like you're undervalued. So too many customers creates a mismatch of services to customer expectations. Uh, at the higher end. 
um, and there needs to be some demarcation zones. So I would contend that most businesses could actually dispose of 20 to 30 percent of their customer base without significantly impacting on their revenue. Um, not only would it not significantly impact on the revenue, it would have significant impact on the cost to serve because they wouldn't have to uh, service you know, 20, 30, 40 percent of the customer inquiry calls, um, but they'd only lose 9 percent of the revenue. So for my view, you know, most businesses do have too many customers and if they bothered to look at it in a cold light of day um, and were able to measure the value of each customer and determine whether they should treasure or avoid them, um, then they would take different uh, steps and actions. Um, so, you know, in the answer to answer the question of too many customers, yes, I think most businesses, not all, but most businesses have too many customers.